So it's time to dive into the world of Ultra Beast with Feromosa to go ahead and figure out how to take her down in raids for Pokemon Go. So let's jump into it. First, let's get to know Feromosa a little bit better. It is a bug fighting type, kind of like Buzzswole, but more on the fragile side. It has a double weakness to flying types, which we're easily gonna hit exploit here. It does also have weaknesses to fire psychic fairy moves. So keep that in mind. Its resistances though are bug, dark, fighting, grass, and ground types, which makes it pretty good against those resistances. His stat line is going to be 316 attack, which is a very good attack, a 85 in his defense, and a 174 in his stamina. This Pokemon is making for a glass cannon of an attacker, hitting really hard, but not surviving very much. So keep that in mind. Now, things to look out for for his CP is his max CP is going to be 3,213. It's pretty low for the Ultra Beast or Legendaries in general. Also, things to keep in mind is the 1,624, which you'll be looking for for the 100% CP. Now, in Weather Boost, though, you are wanting that rainy and cloudy weather at a 2,030. Now, that's everything you really need to know, so let's jump into the counters. Remember, exploiting Fermosa's double weakness to flying type moves will give you a significant advantage in this raid. Because those counters are like Moltres with Wing Attack, Sky Attack, Rayquaza with Air Slash, Dragon Ascent, Honchkrow with Peck, Sky Attack, Toga Kiss with Air Slash, Aerial Ace, and Star Raptor with Gust Fly. Those are some good base counters you can easily use. Now, keeping that in mind, these Pokemon are going to help you deal massive damage since they are Megas, so the key Megas you could be using to boost the flying type is Mega Rayquaza with Air Slash Dragon Ascent, dealing massive amounts of damage, Mega Pidgeot with Gust Brave Bird, and Mega Beedrill with Poison Drab Aerial Ace. Beedrill isn't a flying type, yet it gets a flying type move and will be boosting all candy gains since they share that bug typing. So now that we know the counters, we need to kind of know the moves to better equip them for our use. So the fast moves are gonna be Bug Bite and Low Kick. Low Kick is an amazing stab move for him, so keep that in mind, you might wanna put him on yours. Charge Attack does have Lunge, Bug Buzz, Focus Blast, and Close Combat. Those are all amazing charge moves to have on yours. But the best move set for him is gonna be the Bug Bite, Bug Buzz, helping you rank in the top 10 or bug type category of attackers. Keeping your defense in mind though, because you are a glass cannon, you're more like a mega Gengar, non-mega. <laughs> so in the bug category, he is gonna be dealing massive damage as a bug type attacker, yet very frail and can easily get knocked out. If you are into the Go Battle League though, you can be using him in the Master League with Bug Bite, Close Combat, and Lunge, making him a bug attacker with a 15-15-15 in the Master Rank ranking 524 so if you want to put him on your team you can easily throw off some people if you can get those quick attacks off hitting really hard allowing you to knock out some very crucial ko's but now that we counted the moves the counters now we need to think about the weathers so take advantage of your weathers because windy weather is going to be boosting all flying and psychic type pokemon so allowing you to do more damage and boosting those flying types even further. Clear and sunny weather will be boosting all fire types if you are wanting to take that in there. And then cloudy weather will be boosting all fairy types and CP boosts. That is gonna be boosting some CPs here. So watch out for that along with the rainy, which will be boosting all bug type attacks and CP boosts as well. So now that we know everything from weaknesses, stats, counters, and moves, we need to catch them because that's very crucial if we are trying to use them on our team. Some top tips I recommend is one, use a golden raspberry. It increases your chance of catching the Pokemon because this is gonna be a legendary since it is the same category. It is gonna be harder to catch, so making it rare. Now an excellent throw stacked on top of that is gonna increase your chance even more, helping you get a higher success rate simply by putting a golden raspberry in an excellent throw if you don't get an excellent throw, it's not at the end of the world. You can still get a nice or a great throw because honestly, if we all know Pokemon Go, sometimes you don't need to hit an excellent throw to catch a legendary. It just helps. But then lastly, the shiny. The shiny is on the last screen when you're trying to catch it. That's when you get a no. That's when the adrenaline's pumping. You get to see if it is a white 
or a black shiny. Whenever it is shiny, it looks like it puts on a black dress. You can easily tell if it's the shiny. So if the shiny's there, good for you. That is amazing. The shinies are rare and hard to get. So being so, if you take some of those extra steps like we just mentioned, you can easily go ahead and make it yours using the golden raspberry, the excellent throw, and just simply being patient, waiting for the best opportunity to throw the Pokeball. But there you have it. That is everything you need to know from counters, moves, stats, and even a shiny in Pokemon Go. So if you found this one informative, let me know down below and go ahead and click in this next video to help you stay up to date with everything going on in Pokemon Go. And I'll see you over there.